Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a collaboration with Sandy from Nashville. She is an artist, a YouTuber, and she also has an Instagram. I would highly recommend for you to go check her out. She has the most infectious personality. She's got these positive vibes that she's putting out in all of her videos. I started watching her videos when I stumbled across one of her posts on Instagram. And when I watched her video, it just made me smile the whole time. She's just got, as I said, such a bright energy and it really draws you in. So go check out our YouTube channel. I will have her YouTube channel link in the description box below and please subscribe to support her. I think she's an incredible artist. What we're doing in this collaboration today is we're actually going to be creating art based on the other person's style or YouTube channel. Now, Sandy let me know that she loved watching my Japan vlog videos. So she's actually creating an artwork around my, um, my travels around Japan. Now, when I saw her footage, I fell in love with the artwork she created. I really want to print it out and hang it up on my wall because not only is it absolutely gorgeous and it's just well documented, it reminds me of all the great memories I had in Japan so I would love to have that print um, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be experimenting with Sandy's birds so she does the most beautiful bird, these designs in journal spreads and um, she paints them and I'm pretty sure she um, uses lots of different mixed media to create these beautiful birds but what I was thinking of doing is messing around in a journal spread first seeing if I can draw them out. If I can't, then I'm going to try and make some canvas style paintings um, and work with a bit of mixed media there as well. So the outcome is very interesting. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's my favorite artwork, but it was fun just to mess around with things that you haven't done before. So I hope you enjoy this video. Now the questions that we're actually going to go over in this video is what inspires you to create art? How do you stay motivated? Um, how does art make you and others happy? And what are your favorite art materials to create with? So um, let's start the video and we'll start answering some of these questions. Hey guys, it's Sandy here from Bits of an Artist's Life. I'm so excited about this collaboration. It's like my first official YouTube collaboration. Brittany, I want to thank you so much for this opportunity. It's really been just such a blessing and a joy and exciting to do. So I am a full-time professional artist and I'm also a full-time YouTuber. So I hope you'll go check out my channel. It's Bits of an Artist's Life. It is exactly what the title says, just bits of my life as an artist. I love Brittany's Japan videos. So what I wanted to do was do a sketchbook spread inspired by her Japan travels. Kind of like what I would be doing if I was going to be documenting my own trip. I do daily sketchbook pages where I'll capture my day and I'm going to do it in that kind of style. Here's the deal. I did more than one because I just could not decide which medium to use. I did three different ones in three different mediums and you'll get to see all of those here. The main thing that inspires me to create art is creating constantly. I am always creating and creating inspires me to create. There's something about keeping these tools of observing and creating the movement of your hand, your brain engaged and inspired that helps you continue to create. There's also a consistent diet or intaking of others creating, such as things like art videos on YouTube, art podcast. Those are things that I'm always looking at. Sometimes there's just something so inspiring about watching someone else create, watching that paintbrush slide across the page. It will often stir up inspiration for me and make me want to get in the studio and start creating. There's something about just getting in there and creating. Everything that you create is not good. In fact, the majority of what you create is probably not all that great. I always say you have to create the bad stuff to make the good stuff. What inspires you to create art? The first thing I asked myself was why do we create? Is art an expression of emotion, our world around us? A place that we can escape to and, ex and focus and express our thoughts and feelings. I create in this rhythm no matter what medium, if it's poetry, creative writing, pottery, paint, mixed media, 
I get inspiration from everything around me and that's what I want to express it in a certain type of media. There's no to-do list, no timetables, no appointments, just the flow of whatever is happening. You're here in the present moment. There's this moment where you're waiting for the paint to dry or a wax seal to melt and you're focusing on the now, the creation, the journey. It's usually never the end goal that you want to get to. It's the it's the creation and it's the journey that you're on that is the exciting part. Now, around us, I get inspiration from so many things. This can be out when I'm on a walk and I see some patterns on a flower, um, colors of leaves, the colors of the sky, the movement of the clouds, the joy and laughter of kids playing or riding their bicycles. It's everything that around me that I bring back into my um, art studio, my art space. I'll bring into these, I'll bring these patterns and colors into my work. I'll look at the composition and the textures and that's how I'll move things around. The emotions that I have that day um, definitely impacts the art that I'm going to create. So um, the inspiration that I may get from children's laughter may bring a joyful picture or a joyful painting or a joyful um, poem that I'm creating. So it's everything around me, it's the world around me that really inspires me. I know that Sandy touches on this, but it's also other people that inspire me too. It's when I'm watching YouTube videos of art tutorials to see how people connect with their um, tools and how they actually compose and create is also something that makes me want to get out there and create something as well. I see Instagram pages where I get inspired by the um, the stationery that they've used or the, the way that they've put it together or even it can be simply the colour palettes that they use that will inspire me. The way that I find time to create, I have different mediums and different methods of creating and different mediums take more or less time. So if I'm gonna crank out a watercolor, man, I can do that in five minutes, or an oil pastel sketch, or even just like a finished piece in an oil pastel, it's really fast. So I can, if I have to like 10 minutes before a meeting or before I'm gonna go do something, I can go in there and crank one out really fast, or I can be in there and take an hour and do several. How do you stay motivated and find time to create? For me, I create weekly, and as I said, this can be in any medium. So um, my creations might be filming and journaling, and when I do get inspired by other people, that's when I want to create more. I'm on quite a strict, strict schedule because of YouTube, so I like to post weekly. And the more that I create, the more that I want to create as well. So when I've finished off a video about journaling, I might flip through another few pages and continue create, creating. Sometimes if I go buy stationery or go, I go buy new products, I want to use those products and see which different ways I can use them. So having a space um, and a space where you've got your um, materials laid out or the things around you that inspires you um, makes me want to create more and it's not so much forcing me to create, it's just the, the things that I do, I, I basically want to create more, but as I said, YouTube allows me to focus on um, a weekly creation, and then that might inspire more creation for that week. I hope that made sense. <laughs> How does art make you happy? I love observing, I love shape, I love objects. I love color, and those are things that really bring a lot of joy to me. Creating is just in me. It's something that I have to do. I love it, and I can't imagine life without creating. There's a lot of joy in creating something. So I'm thinking of things like, yes, my art, but I'm also thinking of my YouTube videos, which have more of a playful, happy, joyful, lightheartedness about them and inspiration. So I'm, I'm thinking of those two aspects of my creative life when I answer this. There's something about creating something. So let's just take a piece of art, creating 
a still life that's beautiful. And then being able to share that with someone. So somebody comes into my house, sees something that they want to buy, and then they want to take that home and it brings them joy. It feels like it creates this finished circle, that it comes full course when someone else, when you create something and then someone else gets to enjoy it. There's something really delightful and fulfilling about that. Just like my YouTube videos, I love, well, first off, I love making fun of myself and just laughing. Grady and I, my husband and I, we love to laugh. So I've found that in my videos, I love being able to hopefully bring others laughter. But to be able to create these videos and then put them out each week, and then when I get to hear back from those viewers that they found it funny or that it really inspired them or they're back in the studio creating it is that full circle again it comes back that I've created this video and put it out there for someone else to enjoy for it to enter into their life and produce something there's that full circle that just it's so satisfying it brings me so much joy there's just a lot of that that happens i think in in creating even in my sketchbooks it's something that i go back to and look through them often because when they stir up creativity there's things that i'm like oh i want to go now paint that from that sketch but for me it's that full circle and that it brings back memories of trips and it's just a personal full circle that i created something a while back and now i get to come back and enjoy it and look through it and it brings back memories that I just really enjoy. Yeah, there's a whole lot about art that brings me happiness and joy, and I can't imagine life without it. So how does art make me happy, and how does it make others happy too? I get a lot of um, emails, DMs on Instagram, messages in my comments saying that my art inspires people. I think inspiration does um, create happiness. When you're inspiring people and they're going back and they're using those ideas and they're putting in their own um, expression, whatever material they're using to create their own art, that can be something that creates happiness. As I said, being in the moment and it can be like a meditative practice, then these are all things that you can feel happiness. Finishing an artwork brings satisfaction, which creates happiness. Um, and the journey of creating this art and using your hands and you not knowing what the outcome is going to be and then stepping back and having that appreciation of um, going through that, that um, art journey is something that really does create happiness for myself and for others as well. So I think showing your artwork can inspire other people to then go out and create. Oh man, what are my favorite art materials? I feel like I could go on and on about this. I really need to do another favorites video. I did one a, a while back, but it was not just on my art materials. It was on YouTubers that I follow and I don't remember what all, but a whole bunch of stuff. So you may want to go check that video out. I think number one are my oil paints. Number two would be my flash paint. It's what I paint with most in my sketchbooks. I don't like acrylic paint. This is a vinyl paint, so it's kind of like oils, gouache, and acrylic had a baby. There's just something really wonderful and flat, kind of old vintage postery-ish that I like about this flash paint. One of my all-time favorite art materials are my sketchbooks. I love my sketchbooks and I have found my favorite of all favorites and it's the Stillman and Burn sketchbooks. I also love the Faber-Castell Polychromos color pencils. I've never been a color pencil fan, but I love these. That's just a quick little glimpse of some of my favorite art materials. So what are my favorite art materials to create with? I sort of touched on this before that I like lots of using lots of different materials. I think my number one material that I love to work with is paper, just because there's so many different types of paper. You can um, find paper from receipts, from packaging, from um, ripping out of books. Um, you can buy paper, you can have transparent paper, you can have thick paper. There's lots of different types of paper that you can use. Some can be very beautiful, some can be quite old and gentle and you use paper different ways. You need to use different materials on top of that paper as well differently. Um, as I said, you can rip paper, you can collage with paper, you can write on paper. 
far. So I definitely think paper is something that I use the most throughout my creations and I love the art form of using um, paper and collecting it from all different places. But as I said, you can, you can use so many different materials and the materials that get me most excited is when I'm creating material things from unconventional materials. So when I was creating the Wreck It journal or the Wreck This journal, um, I was using things like the river to create um, water patterns on the page. Sometimes I was rubbing it in dirt or throwing it a wall and these things were all so much fun because you look back and see how did that affect the journal and using those unconventional tools can be so much fun. So if you have a chance to spend a weekend um, ripping things and um, splatting paint all over things and rubbing dirt in different ways, look back and see what you've created and I think those are the things that, um, those are the, the types of materials that are most fun. So rubbing dirt on it or collecting flowers and leaves. Um, but yeah, I just think that even though, even if you use the same materials as other people, you're not ever using in the same way because you've got your own um, you've got your own personality type and your own lived experience that are going to affect it. As I said before, your moods can change the way that you use these and the types of um, tools to put these together. So if you're using a glue stick rather than um, double-sided tape, it really changes how the outcome is going to look. So even though you may be using materials as the same person as someone else, um, you're never going to create the same thing, um, but yeah, definitely unconventional materials is something that um, is really fun to use, but as I said, paper, you can just create so many different things and it will never come out the same. So I think, yeah, going back to the original question, um, paper would be my number one preference. I know that's a bit odd, but yeah, it's just, it, you can do so much with it. Guys, I'm super happy with how this turned out. So it's just filled with things from Japan, from her trip, with funny stickers, food, things from stationery, candy that she got. I'm really happy with it. Here's the finished oil pastel. Thank you so much for inviting me on your channel. It's just such an honor. Thank you for watching this video today and thank you Sandy for collaborating with me. I hope you guys go over and check out our YouTube channel and go subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye.